OK, let's look at some practical applications. I've said before that trigonometry is extremely useful. And so we'll look at some examples in the real world where trigonometry can be used to solve a problem, to find something. Now, all of these examples deal with right triangle trigonometry. And it's helpful if you can see the triangle. So in a lot of cases, a diagram is given for you. But if it's not, it's a good idea to draw one. Because if you can actually see the triangle and then actually mark on it, actually write on your paper, mark the lengths of sides or mark the angles, that just helps you keep your information organized and see what's going on. So let's look at the first example. The height of a building. In this problem, we're told the sun is 53 degrees above the horizon. Now the sun here is really much, much farther away in this direction. But what we see here is a ray of light from the sun coming in right there striking the ground at this point so the shadow of the building is right here and we're told a building casts a, casts a shadow 29 meters long so this distance from here to here is 29 meters and then we're told to find the height of the building so this is our triangle that's a vertical line right there and the ground is horizontal so that's our right angle and then the ray of sunlight that makes our triangle and we know this angle 53 degrees and then the height here is this side so let's call it H for height you could call it Y if you want to you could call it anything but H for height makes sense now let's think about the tangent ratio here's a 53 degree angle and we know that the tangent is always the length of the opposite side divided by the length of the adjacent side so in this case we can say the tangent of 53 degrees will be this over this the opposite over the adjacent and in this case that is h over 29 meters so because tangent is opposite over adjacent we can take that concept and apply it to this triangle the tangent of this angle has to be this over this. So in this case, the tangent of 53 is h over 29. Then we can just take this little equation and rearrange it algebraically to solve for h. So basically, we just multiply both sides by 29 meters. So h ends up being 29 meters times the tangent of 53 degrees. And we do that on the calculator, just 29 times the tangent of 53. Make sure the calculator is in degree mode and we get an answer. This comes out to 38.5 meters. And let me make one comment on this problem. We found the height of this building and we did it with the measurement of this length down here, the shadow, and this angle. And those are both measurements that can be made from the ground. We don't actually have to go up to the top of the building. And this method would work for anything, not just a building. This could be a tree or a cliff, any object that we're trying to find the height of. And we can do that without actually going up to the top of the object. We might not be able to get to the top of the building or the top of the tree, or it might be a dangerous cliff that, that we don't want to climb or something like that. But all of these measurements can be made from the ground and from those measurements we can accurately calculate an answer if we know some trigonometry. Okay, next example, the slope of a road surface. We are told here that a road ascends 8 feet for every 100 feet of horizontal distance. So here's the 8 feet vertically and this of course is the hundred feet horizontally and that's labeled in the diagram the thing to realize is that if this is vertical and this is horizontal then this must be our right angle right there so the road surface here is the hypotenuse so this is a really skinny right triangle and that angle is the right angle and we're told to find the angle of inclination of the road surface so that means how much the road surface here is inclined from horizontal so that's this angle right here this really skinny angle we want to find that and we'll find the answer in degrees well again the tangent is always opposite over adjacent so let, let's give this angle a name here we'll call it theta so the tangent of theta in this case is going to be 8 over 100 and you could say 8 feet 
over 100 feet, but the feet will cancel out algebraically. So the tangent of theta is 8 over 100. Because as long as we have a, a constant angle of inclination here, it, it would go up 8 feet vertically for every 100 feet vertically, or 8 meters. 100 feet horizontally, or 8 meters vertically for 100 meters horizontally, the units don't really matter because they will cancel out whatever they are. It's an 8 to 100 ratio. So the tangent of theta is 8, 8 over 100, so then we can find theta. If the tangent of theta is this, then theta is the inverse tangent of that. So it's the inverse tangent of 8 over 100. And I would type it exactly into the calculator like that. You could compute 8 over 100 uh, and get a number for that. It'd be a decimal value and then do the inverse tangent of that. But you can do it in one step on the calculator like that pretty easily. And this comes out to 4.57 degrees. And then I just want to point out that this is actually a steep road. It doesn't look steep in this diagram, but this is steeper than most roads that you would find. Most roads, even in the mountains, will go up, up and down at a more gentle angle than that. And another example, finding the distance to a ship at sea. And in this problem, you are on a cliff that is 120 meters above the sea. So we're given a diagram here, but this information that we've just been told, you're on a cliff that is 120 meters above the sea, that would be this height right here. So let's go ahead and write that on the diagram, 120 meters. And you look out to sea and spot a ship. So there it is. And your line of sight to the ship makes an angle of 17 degrees below the horizontal. So this line right here is 17 degrees below the horizontal. So watch this. If you were right here, then from here, a horizontal is right here. So I'm going to draw in this line horizontally. So this angle is the one that we're told is 17 degrees, and you should draw that on your diagram as well. Now, if you've had geometry, you should realize that this line and this line are parallel, because this, we're told, is horizontal, and then the surface of the water, of course, is horizontal. So if those are parallel, look at this. That line and that line are parallel, and this is what, in geometry, we call a transversal, and this angle here and this angle here are what we call alternate interior angles. And even if you don't remember that from geometry, you might be able to see intuitively that this angle and this angle have to be equal. Alternate interior angles are always equal. So if this is 17 degrees here, then this is 17 degrees down here. So let's write that in, 17 degrees. And we're going to think about this triangle. And the cliff here is vertical and the water is horizontal. So this is our right angle down here in this corner. And we're told to find how far the ship is from the base of the cliff. So this is the distance we're looking for. And I'll call it x. Okay, now let's think about our triangle. This triangle right here. We know the 17 degree angle, and in this case we can say that the tangent of 17 degrees, well tangent is opposite over adjacent. So here's the side that is opposite the 17 degree angle, and here's the side that is adjacent. So in this case the tangent of 17 degrees is 120 meters divided by x. So then we can simply solve this for x. Rearranging this algebraically gives me x is 120 meters over the tangent of 17 degrees. And I do that on the calculator. The calculator will give me this number. So 20 meters divided by that comes out to 392.5 meters. 392.5 meters is the answer.